ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯಂ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧರ್ಭವತು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಗುರವೇ ಸರ್ವಲೋಕಾಷೇಭವರೋಗಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ದಯಾನಂದ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥಸ್ವಿಣ ತತ್ವಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರಶಾಸ್ತಾರ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಪರಂ ಪದ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತ ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತುಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂಚಮ ದೀಂ ಸರಸ್ವತೀ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ಓಂ ಪಾಥಾಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸನ ಘಟಿ ಪುರಾಣಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣಿ ಭಗವತಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾದಶಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿನೀ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಿ ಭಗವತ್ ೇಷಿಕರೋತಿ ಪಂಗು ಲಂಘಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ಕೃಪಾತ್ತಮಹಂ ವಂದೇ ಪರಮಾನಂದಮಾಧವ second chapter <coughs> we can recite from the first shloka onwards atha dvitiyo dhyaya ha atha dvitiyo dhyaya ha sanjaya uvacha sanjaya uvacha tam tatha kripaya vishtam tam tatha kripaya vishtam ಶ್ರೀಪೂರ್ಣಾಕುಲೇಕ್ಷಣೀದಂತಮಿದ್ಯಾಚ ಮಧುಸೂದನ 
ಅನಾರ್ಯಜುಷ್ಟಮಸ್ವರ್ಗ್ಯಂ ಅಕೀರ್ತಿಕರಮರ್ಜುನ ಕ್ಲೈಬ್ಯಂ ಮಾಸ್ಮಗಮ ಪಾರ್ಥ ನೈತತ್ವಯುಪದ್ಯತೆ ಕ್ಷುದ್ರಂ ಹೃದಯ ದೌರ್ಬಲ್ಯಂ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಉಚ ಕಥಂ ಭೀಷ್ಮೇ ದ್ರೋಣಂ ಚ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಪೂಜಾರ್ಹಾವರಿ ಸೂದನ ಗುರು ಹಿ ಮಹಾನುಭಾವ ಶ್ರೇಯೋ ಭೋಕ್ತು ವೈಕ್ಷ್ಯಮೀಹಲೋಕೆ ಹಾರ್ಥಕಾಮಸ್ತು ಗುರು ನಿಹೈವ ಚೈತ್ವಿಮಕ್ಷತರಣ್ಣೋ ಗರೀಯ ಜಯೇಮಯಿಭಾನೋಜೇಯುಸ್ಥಿತಮುಖೆ ಧಾರ್ತರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಕಾರ್ಪಣ್ಯದೋಷೋಪಹತ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಸಂಮೂಢಚೇತ ಯಶ್ಚಿತ ಶಿಷ್ಯಸ್ತೇಹಂ ಶಾಧಿ ಪ್ರಪನ್ನ this shloka we saw in the previous class you can mute your mic now so <clears throat> arjuna says karpanya doshena upagatah i am afflicted by this dosha dosha is called karpanya dosha what is the meaning of the word karpanya that is the word karpanya is a taddita taddita word derived from the word kripana kripana means miser 
Krupana means myself. Those who have money but not using is called nicer. That is only the dhanam, that is with regard to the dhanam in the Vivahara, dhanam stands for all the wealth, fixed, mobile, all the assets, dhanam. The dhanam, what you have, you may not use, you may be miserly. That person is called a miser. This dhanam is what you earned by your effort. Therefore, you have the, the right to keep the dhanam and use it only for yourself or not to use at all. But Bhagavan has given dhanam, dhanam in the form of buddhi, viveka shakti. The viveka shakti, that is the real dhanam which Bhagavan has given to all the human beings. If the human being doesn't use that Shakti, that Dana, that person is called a Maisar, Maisarly person. So Kripana meaning Maisar, Maisar here, not in terms of the physical wealth, this is in terms of the wealth, wealth which is Viveka, Viveka Dana. The one who doesn't use the wealth the wealth is Viveka Shakti, which Bhagavan has given. The Shakti by which one can analyze and understand which is wrong, which is right, what is to be done, what is not to be done. Kartavyam, Akartavyam, iti, that the Veda is understood by which, understood through Buddhi. The one doesn't use that Buddhi is called Kripanaha. What is the consequence of being a Kripana? If a person has this dosha, what is the consequence? If the person has wealth, external wealth, dhanam, money, what is the consequence of not using that? The money will not be useful to you, it will not be useful to others. The money is meant for earning punyam by doing punya karma. That is called dharma. For dharmika purposes, if the person uses money and earns punya, that punya will fructify in the form of pleasant situation or maybe the punya may help him to grow, for, grow spiritually. That is the benefit of having dhanam. Dhanam is meant for doing dharmakarya. In Shastram, there are many dharmakaryas are talked about. like the Ishta Karma, Purta Karma, all those Karmas. Ishta Karma, Purta Karma, that is dig, that is digging wells, creating Anachatram and creating places for the pilgrimage to stay. All those are Punya Karma, reaching out action. Agnihotram tapas satyam, Vedanam chanupalanam, Atityam vaishvadevam cha, Ishtamitya vidhiyate, Ishtakarma. Purta karma, Vapi kupatada gadi, Devata yata nicha, Anna pradana mara maha, Purtamitya vidhiyate, Vapi kupatada digging wells, digging ponds and creating and, and constructing places for the pilgrimage to stay and doing Annadana, all this called Purta Karma. So, Dhanam is meant for, is meant for doing, reaching out action. It's meant for contribution. First is earning and then is spending on Dharma not to hold the external wealth. Similarly, the wealth which Bhagavan has given in the form of this Viveka Shakti is, is not meant for holding. It has to be used. If the person doesn't use, he is called a Krupana, a Maisa. And what is the consequence? 
if the person is miserly in using this viveka shakti he loses the very purpose of taking this human janma and manushya janma is very rare manushyatvam mamukshyatvam mahapurusha samshraya this three durlabham treme vaitat deva anugraha yetupam this three are difficult to get the status of being a human being and having the mamukshyatvam the desire to be free and association with great mahatmas these three are very difficult to get and therefore being a manushya that is the first thing first condition which is a rare thing durlabham why it is durlabham because there are there are 84 millions of species are there among them taking human birth is not a joke you can just see the probability with all our papa and punya in our account taking the next janma as a human being what is the probability out of this 84 million species therefore manushyatvam is durlabham and being a manushya endowed with this viveka shakti if the person doesn't use us that what can you call him how can you call him you can call him only as a maisar therefore upanishad uses the word maisar kripana the word kripana is used by brigadaranika upanishad the third chapter it section 10th mantra brigadaranika upanishad says yah atmanam abhiditva asmat lokat preeti sah kripanah the one who without knowing understanding atma who leaves the world the person is a kripana the purpose of human janma human birth is to no no god the purpose of human birth is to no one self and whatever the, the the faculties which bhagavan has given meant for knowing him that has not been used by the person therefore that person is called kripana so kripanaha sarjana says karpanya doshena atah karpanya doshena upagata swabhavah i am suffering i suffer from this karpanya dosha that is my viveka buddhi the faculty of discriminating things and understanding it is not functioning i am afflicted with this dosha now i am not able to discriminately understand what is nitya and what is anitya nitya anitya vastu viveka is not there in me if this viveka is not there then there is no spiritual life if dharma adharma viveka is not there then there is no a proper material life even if the person is in lives a material life dharma adharma viveka is not there then he will earn only papam getting into adharma and the consequence of adharma is dukkham so dharma adharma viveka is required and nitya anitya vastu viveka is required all the more for being in this spiritual pursuit therefore karpanya doshah karpanya doshena atah therefore dharma sammoda chetah since my mind is not functioning therefore i am not able to discern what is dharma and what is adharma so arjuna he he accepts that he is not in a position to think then why did he give a long lecture in the first chapter he is arjuna krishna allowed him to let out let out is all his emotions so first the first thing krishna allows is he allows arjuna to let out before the person as for advice advice should not be given upadesha should not be given first when a person comes to Come, come to you for some upadesha from instruction you should allow the person first to let out first be the listener krishna be a very good listener 
he patiently was listening to all the 47 shlokas plus some more shlokas in this chapter he was patiently listening immediately he did not jump and give him instruction he did not stop his thinking also let him think let him think let him speak out first and krishna patiently listen very good listener then then allowing arjuna to allowing arjuna to pour out and make him realize that his thinking is not proper that is the first thing the listener should do if the the person if the speaker as if the speaker as some issues and comes to you for some upadesha allow the speaker to speak when the speaker speaks then you will get clarity to gain clarity the first thing is the speaker should be allowed to speak out the listener job is nothing his job is only to listen listening itself will do a great good to the person that has done here to arjuna so arjuna now he realized then some problem with my thinking dharma sammuda chetaha my mind is not functioning he accept that mind is not functioning even though he quoted from dharma shastra and all he quoted from different perspective the war is not proper to be fought that too with his own kith and kin but now he understands that his mind is confused it's not functioning he says dharma sammuda chetaha mood chetas is mind the mind is moodah samyak moodah moodah means deluded not functioning not functioning properly with regard to dharma with regard to dharma adharma what is proper what is to be done kim kartavyam kim akartavyam iti i'm confused with regard to that therefore tvam prichami i ask you you tell me very firmly without any doubt clearly firmly decisively you tell me nischitam tat bruhi me bruhi tell me what yat sheyah syat that which is good ultimately good for me that you tell me firmly that which is good that which is ultimately good the word sheyah is it's a upanishadic word this on the last class the word is used by yeah. yamadharma raja when chiketa asked for this atma gyanam yamadharma raja he introduced a topic through using these words shreyas and prayas shreyas is that which is absolutely good prayas is that that which is pleasant it's good that is material pursuit is called prayas dharma artha kama purushartha is denoted by the word prayas and moksha is denoted by the word shreyas so here arjuna asks for moksha so vyasa acharya he introduces the, the topic slowly now the disciple the, he has not yet become the disciple arjuna now the arjuna he asks that which is good what is the way for moksha what is the way to, to be free so he is asking spiritual upadesha advice instruction for that he should become a disciple therefore he says shishya stegam agam tava shishya te shishya i am your disciple please accept me as your disciple shishya stegam shadi shadi mam tvam prapannam agam tvam prapannam i surrender i surrender unto you you accept me as your disciple mam shadi please teach me what what is a way what is a way for moksha what is a means for gaining moksha iti arjuna he has so arjuna now he is not interested in all this this transient material pleasure now he is asking for moksha so what is a way for gaining moksha so therefore now arjuna the friend arjuna has become the disciple arjuna and the friend krishna has become the teacher krishna even though they are thick friends 
but when it comes to upadesha when it comes to the instruction when it comes to teaching then one has to give up his ego and become the disciple one has to follow the protocol tadviddhi pranipatena pariprashnene sevya bhagavan krishna himself says in the gita you go to the teacher and fall flat you offer your namaskara completely surrender to him and ask ask for this knowledge doing service doing service to the guru that is the protocol even even the mageshwara when he wanted to learn the secret of omkara from his own from his son kartikeya kartikeya become the guru the son become the guru and lord shiva become the disciple so the protocol is the son will sit on the asana and the shishya will sit on the floor and ask for advice that is a protocol even if it is father son when the father becomes a disciple he has to follow the protocol because he is asking for spiritual knowledge so son becomes a guru father becomes the disciple therefore when it comes to this knowledge spiritual knowledge that is there is no age there is no gender all these all these are nothing all these are not considered at all even if you take dakshina murti dakshina murti it looks very young clean shaven no mustache nothing no beard and this dakshina murti is surrounded by four disciples sanaka the disciples are surrounded and in the dakshamati dhyana shloka itself we see vriddho shishyaha guruhu yuva iti guruhu yuva guru is youth young young person and the shishyas are vriddhaha all elderly people you can see you can see the four disciples having a big belly and long beard and jata is there but where dakshamati is clean shaven is clean shaven it, it, that, that youth the, the youth is is presented in his face you can see is young person having a flat belly six pack whereas the other the disciples who are sitting they have got a pot belly so that the age is shown guru is young disciples are old it has nothing to do with age they have to follow the protocol to receive the teaching from the, the guru therefore here also arjuna even though krishna is his friend but now he surrenders to lord krishna krishya stegam mam shadi iti then slowly arjuna has offered himself to off to the feet of bhagwan krishna now he further he says he will read the next shloka nahi prapashyami mama panudyat ಮೃದ್ಧಂ ಸುರಿ ಚಾಧಿಪದ್ಯ ಸೊ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಸೇಸ್ ನಿ ಪ್ರಪಶ್ಯಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಪಶ್ಯಾಮಿ ಪಶ್ಯಾಮಿ ನ ಪಶ್ಯಾಮಿ ಅಗಂ ನ ಪಶ್ಯಾಮಿ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿ ವೈ ಇ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಸಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಬೈ ಎಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ದರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಿ ಇ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ನಿ ಪ್ರಪಶ್ಯಾಮಿ ಭೂಮೌ ಅಸಪತ್ನ ವೃದ್ಧಂ ರಾಜ್ಯಂ ಅವಾಪ್ಯ ಅಪಿ ಸುರಾಂ ಆಧಿಪತ್ಯ ಅವಾಪ್ಯ ಅಪಿ ಯತ್ 
मम शोक इंद्रियाना उच्चोषण मम शोक यत मम शोक अपनुया तत् इंद्रिया उच्चोषण शोक अपनुद्या अहम न पश्या सी ई डोट सी दट विच रिमूव just a minute just a minute I'll... असपत्न असपत्न सपत्न शत्रुना रगित असपत्न दट इज विदउट एनी रईवल नो एनिमी आर दट एंड रुद्धम रुद्धम राज्यम रुद्धम इज रुद्धम इज प्रॉस्पेरिटी राज्यम विच इज प्रॉस्परस अवाप्य हैविंग गेन तो राज्यम रुद्धम राज्यम अवाप्य भूम असपत्न राज्यम अवाप्य इवन इफ फै गेट दि अनबल अंड प्रॉस्पर किंगडम ऑन द अर्थ भूम सुराणाम आधिपत्यम सुरा मीन देव सुरा असुरा इज डी मीन इवन द लॉर्डशिप ऑफ दि दि देवास् आधिपत्यम अवाप्य Avapya having gained, even if I gained, will that give me the sukham what I seek for? Will, it, will, will that give me the satisfaction? Will that give me what I seek in life? Mama indriya nam uchchoshanam shokam. Indriya means indriya sense organs, and this. Sense organs are uchchoshanam, which is dried up. Why is it dried up? Because in the first chapter he said, "Sidanti mama gatrani mukam cha parishushyati eputushcha charire me roma harsha cha jayate." It is said, "My indriyas are dried up." So that is an indication of the shoka. So that shoka, indriya nam uchchoshanam shokam upanudyat. अपन उद्यात यत कर्म अपन वी हैव टू सप्लाई यत कर्म अपन उद्यात व्हाट एक्शन विल रिमूव द दिस ड्राइंग अप ऑफ माय सेंसेस दैट आई डोंट सी अगि प्रपश्यामी व्हाई बिकॉज़ अहम धर्म सम्मूढ छेताह अहम धर्म सम्मूढ छेताह देयरफॉर दैट व्हिच विल रिमूव दिस दिस प्रॉब्लम Uchchoshan indriya na that sh- that shoka that which which will remove my shoka that I don't see I don't see clearly. Even though if if I gain the asapattanam rudham the unlimited rudham asapattanam rudham unlimited wealth and the kingdom even the kingdom of the sura devas if I get I don't see I don't see that kalyana karam karma. that that karma that action which will remove all this shokam this sorrow so arjuna says that the sense organs are dried up it's not functioning all the energy has drained out now this action what action now what karma engaging in war or disengaging from war which one 
will remove my this this sorrow dukkham iti agam na prapashyami i don't know i don't i don't see it clearly even though arjuna <clears throat> even even if arjuna is even if arjuna is is courageous enough to fight the war and to, and establish dharma and even if he fights because krishna asked him to fight and uh, if he gains the, even the kingdom of heaven but arjuna says what this what action whether that action that action will remove my sorrow that i i don't know that i don't see it clearly which action that is engaging in war or disengaging from war which which action will remove this intense sorrow which from which i am suffering now so arjuna wants to get rid of this dukkha the sadness now he is not worried about the war you can see the the he is worried about the war because 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 that will create sorrow so he is now he is he is want to get rid of this sorrow to get rid of this sorrow now from war to he has come to he has come to the understanding the sadness is a cause so he wants to remove the very cause the sadness the sadness the dukkham whether it will go by winning the war or whether it will go by losing the war if at all if he engages in the war or withdrawing from the war so this is a problem this is samsara problem therefore he is asking for the solution to this problem of samsara sadness removal dukkha nivritti what is the means for dukkha nivritti that is his question so when he asks for dukkha nivritti it means what he is a mumukshu a mumukshu is one who has a desire to be free moktum icha moktum from what freedom from what freedom from sadness samsara is what samsara is dukkham the sorrow is samsara and the person who wants to get rid of this dukkham the person who wants to get rid of moktum icha freedom from dukkham sadness that is called umukshuttam the one who has the one who has is called mumukshu and the desire is called mumuksha so now arjuna is is a mumukshu so therefore this shloka this shloka presents that arjuna has become a mumukshu he has become a mumukshu that is the condition that is a prerequisite for the knowledge for the not for the reception of this knowledge sadhana chatushtaya sampatti viveka vairagya samadhi shakka sampatti hi umukshitpam cheti we have seen sadhana chatushtaya sampatti and important sadhana is umukshitpam that is why we say manushyatvam umukshitpam being a manushya is a rare is a blessing is a rare thing to get and umukshitpam the second thing now arjuna has become a mumuksha from a sansari has become a mumuksha so you can see a big change big change which has come upon arjuna so vyasacharya beautifully presents arjuna as now he become a sadaka he has become a, a sadaka therefore he is asking for the knowledge gaining which i become free where does he ask the knowledge yat shreyaha तत् निश्चित ब्रूहि अगम तव शिष्य इट मीन इज आस्किंग फॉर आत्मज्ञान ब्रह्मज्ञान एंड फॉर दट यस बिकम एन अधिकारी पुरुष दट इज प्रसंटेड टू दिस मंत्र अर्जुन इज नौ इज अमुक्षु सो दैर फोर दैर फॉर अर्जुन नैचुरली दैर फॉर भगवान कृष्ण विल नैचुरली टीच हिम बिकॉज ही इज अज अ साधन चतुष्टय Sampanna ha, adhikari. He has become an adhikari. The situation has made him an adhikari. And Vyasa Acharya presented that Arjuna has become an adhikari in the midst of the battlefield. So, 
therefore to this adhikari arjuna bhagwan krishna will teach when the adhikari purusha as the teacher the teacher will never resist he will give the teaching so up to this is the is the uvacha is the vachanam of arjuna then sanjaya now sanjaya comes to picture and he reports he reports to dhritarashtra all these are where the reportings reporting to sanjaya only now yasacharya says sanjaya uvacha the next shloka what before the teaching starts now sanjaya speaks sanjaya uvacha गोविंद जनरली भगवान कृष्णा विल अड्रेस अर्जुना एस परुद्रृदय दौर्बल्यम तेत्तोष्ट पर भगवान कृष्ण अड्रेस अर्जुना ए परंतप but here sanjaya addresses whom does he address dhritarashtra so he is addressing dhritarashtra he parantap dhritarashtra also parantap a great a great valorous person parantap he dhritarashtra here parantap is not arjuna here parantap is he dhritarashtra evam uktva rishikesham having thus said who said गुडाकेश अर्जुन हाविंग सेट दिस टू हूम ऋषिकेश कृष्ण हाविंग सेट दिस टू भगवान कृष्ण देन वाट इट डू न योत्स्य न योत्स्ये वाट इट इज से न योत्स्ये ई विल नॉट फाइट इ सेट ई विल नॉट फाइट बिकॉज दट नो वॉट टू डू इज वॉन्टेड कृष्ण टू हेल्प हिम द फॉर इ सेट न हि प्रतश्या i will not fight yotsye is rit lakara future tense future tense na yotsye i will not fight iti govindam uktva having told this to govinda tushnim bhaguvah he just kept silent he became silent having said this to govinda govinda is god krishna Having sent this to Bhagwan Krishna, Govindam, Babu, Tushtim Babu, he became silent. Parantapa, Parantapa is from the Datu, Tap Datu, Tap Santape. So Parantapa Santape. So Paran Ripon Tapati, it is Parantapa. Parantapa here it is sambodhana and Rishi Kesha Rishi ka naam Isha ha Rishi Kesha ha the Lord of the Indriyas is called Rishi Kesha and Guda Kesha one more word all this Rishi Kesha Guda Kesha Guda ka naam Isha ha Guda Kesha ha Rishi ka naam Isha ha Rishi Kesha ha the Lord of Indriyas is Rishi Kesha Bhagwan Krishna Paramatma Guda Kesha means the one who has conquered tamas guda gudaka gudaka yaha ishaha nidra nidra yaha isha one who has conquered nidra nidra means sleep sleep stands for tamas arjuna doesn't have tamas the word you can see now how vyasacharya uses gudakesha he doesn't have tamas it means he is a sattva pradana purusha he has got predominance of sattva guna therefore he is an adhikari he has got antakarna shuddhi He has got antakarna chuddi. He is he is a qualified, prepared sadaka. So guda kesha ha. Actually, Yasa Charya uses the word here. Guda kesha means jita nidra ha. The one who has conquered sleep, tamas. 
ಸೊ ಗುಣಾಕೇಶ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಏಂ ಉಕ್ತ ವಾಟ್ ನ ಯೋಚಿಸಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫೈಟ್ ಉಕ್ತ ತೂಷ್ಣಿ ಬಬೂವ ಈ ರಿಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೈಲೆಂಟ್ ಓಕೆ ದೆನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆಪನ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ತಮೋವಾಚ ಋಷಿ ಕೇಶ ಪ್ರಹಸನ್ನಿಭಾರತೀದ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಿ ಉಪದೇಶ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ So, what happened? That Sanjaya says, Tam uvacha rishi keshaha pragasan niva bharata. So, rishi keshaha uvacha bhagwan uvacha bhagwan told what? That is going to start Gita. Gita Padesha is going to be started from the next shloka. So, rishi keshaha tam uvacha. Tam referring to Arjunam. Arjunam uvacha. Pragasan iva. Pragasan iva. ಪ್ರಗಸನ್ ಶತ್ರಂತ ಅಸನ್ ಪ್ರಗಸನ್ ಇವ ಆಸ್ ದೋ ಸ್ಮೈಲಿಂಗ್ ಈ ಲುಕ್ ಡಟ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಆಸ್ ದೋ ಸ್ಮೈಲಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಟು ಆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ಟಿನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ ಬಿನ್ ವೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಬಿನ್ ವೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಉಪದೇಶ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನೋಸ್ ದರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಮೈಲ್ slight smile as though smiling as a smile on his face as though smiling he told these words to whom to vishidantam to the dukkitam arjunam the arjuna who is vishidantam who is sad who is who is sorrowful to him who is very easy seniyogo bayogo madhye between the two armies who is dukkitam who is sad to him he said these words he said these words what are the those words that is starts from the balavant shloka so where the gita upadesha really starts so up to this shloka starting from the first chapter up to this shloka you, you will not find commentary to this by shankar bhagavat pada because this is introduction to the main topic that is upadesha which starts only from the 11th shloka onwards therefore shankar bhagavat pada if you read is shankar bhagavat pada's commentary you will not find commentary to this shlokas the 47 plus 10 57 shlokas there is no commentary the commentary starts only from the 11th shloka but bhagavad pada had written upodghata bhashan and very important and is a masterpiece like the adhyasa bhashyam to brahma sutra similarly this is also considered to be one of the important and and a masterpiece bhashyam of shankar bhagavad pada there he beautifully presents beautifully condenses the condenses condenses the topic and introduces how this introduces the topic of vedanta introduces the the topic of vedanta beautifully it presents which we have seen which we have seen in the gita bhashyam class very elaborately now from the next shloka onwards now bhagwan uvacha so from this shloka onwards it is going to be only the dialogue between bhagwan and arjuna only two uvacha you will find one is bhagwan uvacha other one is arjuna uvach when does arjuna ask when he has any doubts then he will interfere and ask bhagwan krishna therefore arjuna uvach will come rarely maybe one or few shlokas in each chapter may come this tar the upadesha of the bhagwan so now the bhagwan he addresses arjuna the real gita begins with this verse which we will read 
and we will see the meaning of this shloka in the next class. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Ashochyan Anvashochastvam. ಶೋಚಂತಿ ಪಂಡಿತ in the a small point in the <coughs> bashyam shankar bhagavat pada is says tasmat gita shastre kevala deva tatva gyanat moksha prapti hi na karma samuchitat iti nischitah arthah yata cha ayam arthah tata prakarana shah vibhajya tatra tatra prashyamaha so this bashikara very clearly mentions in the bashyam what does it mean it is just a, a prelude to what we are going to see the upadesha which is going to come that is for moksha prapti what is the means gyanat eva moksha prapti hi moksha is gained only through jnanam not through karma karma has got no role to play in gaining moksha moksha is through jnanam therefore this jnana karma samuchaya is dismissed is not possible jnana jnana karma samuchaya is not there for moksha moksha doesn't required karma moksha what is required is gnanam karma is required for gnana yogyata now arjuna uh, he had become a sadhana chatushtaya sampanna he became an adhikari to receive the knowledge and for this knowledge this knowledge when he received the knowledge by receiving this knowledge by knowing this by gaining this he should attain moksha because gnana deva moksha prapti hi there is no karma there is no role for karma to play in gaining this moksha therefore in the wherever required in the, in the bashyam bashikara will dismiss this gnana karma samuchaya because there were people many contenders who will advocate this gnana karma samuchaya combination of gnana and karma even there are people now there are confused people now they will argue that karma also plays a role in gaining moksha for an adhikari for a gyan for an adhikari who has got this gyan yogyata moksha is attainable only through gyan that is there are no other means there are no there are no many paths only one path that is through gnanam so bashikara in the beginning he very clearly says so whenever he gets a chance chance he will dismiss this gnana karma samuchaya vadi we will all sail also will mention that wherever it is required because this need to be understood very clearly kevalat kevalat gnanat eva moksha prapti hi ಅದು ಕರ್ಮ ಚಿತ್ತಶ್ಚ ಶುದ್ಧೇ ಕರ್ಮ ಅದು ವಸ್ತೂಪಲಭ್ಯತೆ ಕರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಚಿತ್ತ ಶುದ್ಧಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ್ಯತಾ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ದ ರೆಡಿನೆಸ್ ಟು ಗೈನ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ್ಯತಾ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತೆಯೇ ಕರ್ಮ ನಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗೈನಿಂಗ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗೈನಿಂಗ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಫಾರ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಕಾರಣ ಜ್ಞಾನ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೈ ಉಪದೇಶ if karma is required then bhagwan krishna would have asked arjuna to fight to gain moksha what did arjuna ask he wanted to get rid of this problem of samsara dukkham 
then bhagwan krishna would have ordered him to fight you fight first and then i will give you upadesha but bhagwan krishna did not say that he gave him gnanam and then he asked him to fight that also can create confusion he gave gnanam and then asking him to fight is it not a combination no because arjuna is yet to become is yet to gain nishta again gnanam therefore since he is yet to gain nishta gnanam therefore bhagwan krishna as as into do karma even if arjuna having received the upadesha suppose it has become a gnani still he has to do is do, do this war because what is to be done is to be should be done and being being a gnani he will not violate dharma what is dharma must be followed he will follow dharma so in either way there is no gnana karma samuchaya sabo bashyakara very clearly says again and again in the bashyam because this some of the shlokas are shlokas can yield itself to the meaning of gnana karma samuchaya as though it is not the real it is it can it can it stoka can seems to seems to convey that idea but it is not therefore if we get any any idea of this gnana karma samuchaya that in the beginning itself we have to we have to better move it so gnana karma samuchaya is not possible for gnanam it's not not possible for moksha there is no gnana karma samuchaya for moksha and in kato upanishad bashika beautifully says param chet gnatavyam aparam chet praptavyam if it is param if it is ishayas then it is a subject matter for knowing if it is aparam aparam means prayas dharma artha kama for gaining dharma artha kama what is required is karma karma is required effort is required prayatna is required therefore param aparam chet praptavyam it is required to be gained if it is param gnatavyam it is gained by knowing so whenever we use the word gain or attain in the context of in the context of moksha it is only knowing gaining is nothing but knowing in the context of moksha gaining means knowing so param chet praptavyam aparam param chet gnatavyam param chet gnatavyam aparam chet praptavyam so since this involves knowledge knowledge for moksha therefore it is therefore therefore it is gnatavyam it is to be known therefore only upadesha is therefore only it is upadesha therefore only it is a pramanam therefore only it is a pramanam like the upanishad upanishad pramanam vedanta is a pramanam pramanam for what pramanam for is a pramanam for not for gaining not for gaining aparam it is for gaining param it is for knowing param because with regard to param there is a confusion that confusion nivritti for the removal of the confusion the removal of confusion itself is gaining is gaining gnanam gnanam is nothing but the removal of the confusion confusion the self concluded the self conclusion which is the confusion it is removed by gnanam and the gnanam involves the gnanam involves upadesha gnanam is is imparted only through upadesha only through teaching therefore only bhagwan krishna teaches therefore only the upanishad gita is pramana shastram moksha shastram we say it is not a karma shastram there is a wrong understanding about gita amongst people as it is a karma shastram it is not a karma shastram it is even though it condenses the whole veda veda purva and vedanta it is a moksha shastram not a karma shastram because it is a moksha shastram that is why it is called upanishad gita upanishad 
refer only Bhagavan Krishna. He gives the Upadesha starting from this shloka, 11th shloka onwards. And, and 11th shloka, he starts with the word Ashojyan. He starts from the, from the Datu, Shuch Datu. Shoka. Shoka means Samsara. He talks about the problem of Samsara and he gives a means to remove this problem of Samsara. At the end, at the end of the Upadesha also, you will see the word Shuch will be used. So between the two Shuch, the whole the teaching is presented. Yes, Acharya beautifully uses the word, beautifully presents the teaching from this shloka onwards up to the 18th chapter, 66th shloka. Gold Gita is covered in this. This is the teaching of the Gita. This is the Upadesha which is covered in these chapters which we will see slowly one by one. We need to dwell on each shloka for some time. So up to the, now we have been moving from moving, we have been reading few shlokas, four or five shlokas a, a class. From this shloka, we have to deal with each shloka elaborately. So we need to spend more time. Maybe we'll be able to cover three, three, four shlokas in a class. Let us see. We'll do it in the, the next class. We'll start from the start this from the next class. So we can stop here. Om. Yam Brahma Varunendra Rudra Marutaha Stunvanti Divyai Stavai Vedai Sangha Padakramo Panishadai Jayanti Yam Samagaha Dhyana Vastita Tadgate Namanasa Pashyanti Yam Yoginaha Yasyantam Navidasura Suraganaha Deva Yatasmai Namaha Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamada Chate Purnasya Purnamada Yapur Nameva Vashishate Om Shantishantishantihi Harihi Om Shri Guru Yonamaha Harihi Om Danivadra Danivadra Danivada Guruji. Danivada Guruji. Danivada Guruji. Danivada Guruji. Danivada Guruji.